The reason I am here today is because I think I have two ideas worth sharing. These ideas might seem to be very simple, but I think that they're actually extremely important. The first idea is that we as a society could benefit a lot from a strong debate culture. And the second idea is that even though organizing good public debates can be extremely hard, we still need to do it. When I think about different achievements of humanity, one of the things that I find to be most remarkable definitely is democracy. I think that the achievements of democracy are simply staggering. Democracy has helped instill respect for human rights. It has helped establish the rule of law. It has helped achieving economic prosperity, limit the power of tyrants. It even has helped avoiding some of the worst mistakes of mankind, like sending people to gulags or doing something as stupid. One could even say that democracy is a type of gift. But democracy is not the usual type of gift. A usual type of gift is something that you will put on your cupboard, you will look at it occasionally, maybe sometimes you will dust it off a little bit. But democracy is not like that. Democracy is actually something significantly different. I would argue that democracy is more like getting a dog or any type of other animal for Christmas. This dog is a gift that will give you a lot of joy, it will give you a lot of happiness, but you need to take care of this gift. You need to feed it, you need to train it, you need to respect it. If you don't take care of this gift, really bad things can happen. Why do I think democracy is a sort of gift that can create problems if you don't look after it? Well, if you look around at even some of the most developed and strongest democracies around the world, you can see that just as democracy is a license to make a lot of these really smart and amazing decisions that I talked about in the very beginning, democracy is also a license to make free decisions that are poor, decisions that are not so well thought out. And even in these amazing democracies, it is still extremely simple to mobilize popular support for bad, populist, and poorly thought out ideas. The way this usually happens is that there is a PR campaign that tries to dumb down the complex issues that we are facing as a society. These approaches try to only depict the world as being extremely one-sided and kind of misses out on the complexity of different things. I personally think this is an incredible problem. Because a lot of the challenges that we are facing as a society and that many other societies in the world are facing are actually extremely complex and significant. Think of something like global warming. Think of something like economic inequality. Think of something like fixing our healthcare systems, our education systems, and other types of systems. These are all very complicated questions that you really need to think about. And we can wake up one morning, we realized we have not taken care of this gift. We have not taken care of the dog that has been given to us and we realize that we have destroyed the world because we have done nothing about global warming. A lot of species have died out, a lot of our economic potential is forever gone. So what can we do about the situation? I think that a big part of the answer is to promote a strong debate culture. So what exactly is a good debate? I think that a good debate has three extremely important elements. The first one is a balanced view of the world. If you are like me, you probably discuss politics and other sort of things with your friends, 
who are typically people who already agree with you, otherwise they wouldn't be your friends. They would never challenge you with any sort of new ideas and say, hey, have you considered this side of the argument? You probably also read newspapers that you already agree with, otherwise you wouldn't be reading them. This is especially the case in Latvia. I can, if you can tell me what newspaper you're reading, with a very high probability, I can tell you which party you're voting for in elections and what sort of post policies that you support and you don't support. I think the debate is a situation where you see two sides presenting both sides of some sort of issue. For example, in global warming, there are two sides to the argument. If you're debating whether you should, for example, implement carbon emission quotas or carbon tax, there are two sides. You can say, hey, we can limit global warming, we can stop global warming. But the other side can say, but hey, we can also s slow down our economic growth, which can have a painful short-term impact. So there are two sides to this. It's a balanced view. That's what I mean with the idea of balanced deliberation. The second element is the element of arguments. An argument is nothing else than a claim that is not simply made in isolation, but is substantiated with strong evidence and good explanation. So a good debate is not a situation where you say, you want to limit global warming, you probably hate America. That's not a good debate. Or a debate where someone says, there is no evidence for man-driven global warming. That is also not a very strong argument, because it's clear that evidence is very, very strong. That's what I mean with this analogy of scales, where you can weigh up different arguments, you can look at their strength, and you can make good decisions. Thirdly, and very briefly, I think that good debates are based on mutual respect and tolerance. Just because I disagree with any one of you, does not mean that I do not respect you as people. This is very hard to understand if you have not been a debate that is driven with respect. But once you've been in there, you understand it's actually really amazing. So now I have shown you this theoretical picture of what a good debate is. Let's add a little bit of real world to this theoretic scenario. Approximately two years ago, myself and a bunch of friends of mine who also have an unhealthy obsession with debating, we looked at Latvia and we looked at some other countries and we realized that debate culture in Latvia is not where it's supposed to be. And we founded an organization called Kuat Duoma, which in uh, Latvian means, what do you think? Here's a picture of us. Shiny, happy people. Uh, and, uh, you know, on the left, you see our um, amazing executive director, Evir. There's myself, there's the always dependent Edmunds, there's uh, the very helpful Ieva. There's also Lauma, that's not in the picture, but she's still pretty great. And uh, the reason we founded this organization is because we have two elements in our mission. Firstly, we want to promote the culture of debating in any type of form. The second reason we founded this organization is because we want to provide argumentation, debating, and critical thinking education to many young people in Latvia, in whatever shape or form. Today, I want to share our experience of trying to organize good public debates. So far, we have organized almost 20 public debates on a wide range of topics, on gender equality, on LGBT rights, on progressive income tax, or whether you should have online voting in parliamentary elections, and many other types of things. And I will be completely honest and upfront with you. Some of our debates have been great, and some of them have been pretty poor. But I want to share this experience because I think that we have learned a few lessons along the way that could be very important for you as well. The first lesson we have learned is the lesson of experimentation. 
When we organized our first debates, we thought, how hard can this be? We're just going to put people in a debate context and say, uh, you have your opinion, argue. But the level of arguments was not very good in most of the cases. So we started experimenting. We started briefing them on what a good argument is, what a good debate is. We started giving them materials in Latvian. We also noticed that if we add experienced student debaters to these public debates, it also kind of spreads out this vibe of good argumentation. And this level of argumentation has been steadily rising over time. And I'm sure we will discover other things in the future that we wouldn't have known beforehand, but we just have to experiment. The second thing that we have learned I know this is a bit of a TEDx cliche, but we have learned the impact of persistence. In the very first debates which we organized, we actually didn't have that much of public attention. And we struggled with attracting people to our debates. But now, gradually, we have approached our friends, we have spread out the message, we also have often agreed with some Latvian online news portals that they're going to do a live stream of our debates. And our last debate last month about the regulation of payday loans, actually all the attracted, you know, this might not seem as a big number to you, but for us it is a big number. We attracted almost 3,000 people as an online audience for a debate, uh, which for us was actually, uh, we thought that was really important. So persistence matters, you just have to do it. The third thing that we have learned is that even though we have been experimenting, we have been trying hard, we still occasionally get really bad debates. It's a fact. Like many human activities in democracy, debate is a deeply imperfect tool which often will go wrong. And I will not lie to you, like, if you have invested a lot of effort in organizing a public debate, you thought you'd done everything correctly, and then you go there, and it's not so good, it actually can be really frustrating. You have invested a lot of time, and you look at this debate, and you think, this is just not so good. But here's my thought. I don't think we have a choice. <laughs> we just have to do it. We have to accept this imperfect nature of public debates, and we still need to promote this debate culture. Why? Because of the extremely devastating potential of democracy that I pointed out to you before. There is a real risk that one morning we will wake up in a world that we completely hate, because we will not have been made the best possible decisions. Uh, for global warming, for inequality, for many types of other things. So I would encourage all of you to also organize your own public debates in your own respective communities on issues that matter. It will be frustrating, it will be hard, but we have to do it. My takeaway is this. I think democracy is an amazing gift for all of these reasons that I pointed out to you before. It has a rich history, and it can be truly wonderful. But democracy is not a simple thing. Democracy can be actually very hard, and it has a potential to be dangerous. And an excellent tool to deal with this is to organize good debates. And not to organize good debates automatically, but to organize debates with this theoretical ideal in mind that I pointed out to you before. Democracy is a gift that you have to take care of, but if you try, if you persist, if you experiment, if you're ready to accept failure, democracy is a gift that will keep on giving. Thank you very much.